Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're talking about how research psychologists stay ethical. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about ethics in research psychology. If you've watched any of our other videos on ethics, you might be wondering how researchers uphold the ethical code of conduct set up by the American Psychological Association. Most researchers don't work with patients, but they still have to comply with all of the same ethical guidelines, and it's incredibly important that they do. Without honest and accurate research, clinicians might begin inappropriate or even harmful therapeutic remedies. A lie in an academic paper can snowball. The researcher lies or misleads in order to get a paper published, and then that research paper is distributed all over the scientific community. The people who read the paper accept that lie as truth and incorporate it into their clinical practice or maybe even base future research off that lie, exacerbating the problem even farther. Now, research misconduct is costly in more ways than one. A lot of psychological research is conducted using money from places like the National Institute of Health, the National Science Foundation, or from bigger colleges and universities who set aside money to fund the research of their professors. That means if you lie about the data that you found, you're wasting people's money. The NIH is funded from the taxes that we pay. Universities are spending tuition money on supporting research. If a researcher lies, they are stealing from the government and from you. It only seems right then that it's also costly in another way. When a researcher lies, they lose a lot. Once a whistleblower makes a complaint, the researcher will be investigated, often from several different institutions. If the complaints are found to be true and the researcher is guilty of research misconduct, they'll lose all chances for future funding and probably also their job. In order to ensure that researchers are upholding the ethical code when working with participants who are humans, the research has to pass through an Institutional Review Board, or IRB. In fact, having an IRB who reviews research is one of the qualifications the federal government has before they'll fund your research. All IRBs have at least five members and have to have not just community members, but people who are out in the field from the community at large. They're typically experts in their fields, but they aren't always scientists. You'll find lawyers, judges, an imam or rabbi or priest, or even members of important community organizations. These individuals work together with scientists on the committee to ensure that all research being done at that institution upholds the ethical code of the APA. Whenever a new research project is being proposed, a researcher must write a summary of the process of the experiment, their justification for the scientific necessity of the research, and clarify the steps that they will take to ensure no participants are harmed during the process of the research. The IRB then reviews that material and can either approve or reject the research project. Specifically, the IRB looks for things like making sure that all the participants in the research are giving their permission for the researchers to conduct their research. This is usually done via an informed consent document. An informed consent document states exactly what the research is doing in order to ensure that the participant is okay with everything that's going to happen during the experiment. The other thing an IRB needs to make sure happens is the process of debriefing. Most people know the term debriefing in relation to TV shows about law and criminal justice, but the process in science is really very similar. After an event has occurred, in our case an experiment, you check with the participant again to make sure that they're okay with everything that happened. You go over the process and make sure they're all right. This is also where the scientist will double check that it's still okay to use the participant's data and to make sure that the participant doesn't have any questions about what just happened. 
The purpose of the debriefing is to make sure the participant is completely okay, that they feel just the same as they did before the experiment. So next, we're gonna talk about something that might not make you feel that good. Psychologists conduct experiments on more than just people. Psychologists around the world conduct animal research to try to answer questions that human research just can't answer. But just in the same way that psychologists have an ethical committee in place to be sure that human experimentation is worthwhile, justified, and harms as little people as possible, psychologists also have an ethical committee in place to ensure that animal experimentation is worthwhile, justified, and harms as little as possible. This committee is called an Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee, or IACUC. Just like an IRB, an IACUC reviews all the institutional research that could be performed by a researcher. The researcher has to clearly define exactly what's going to happen during the experiment and their reasoning and justification for the experiment. The scientific necessity of the research must be agreed upon by all of the committee members. Just like an IRB, an IACUC is composed of at least five members from all over the institution and the community. Most of the individuals have a vested interest in ensuring that no animal suffers. Members can include scientists from different areas of the institution as well as experts on local flora and fauna, maybe wildlife preservationists, members of conservation groups, and definitely ecologists. Perhaps most importantly, every IACUC must have a licensed veterinarian. There's a special branch of the NIH called the Office of Lab Animal Welfare that ensures any research funded by the NIH is held to really high ethical standards. The Office of Lab Animal Welfare and other regulatory bodies like the USDA and representatives of the Public Health Services Animal Welfare Act regularly inspect any facilities where animals are housed as well as where research occurs to ensure the safety and the well-being of all the animals. It's much harder to justify any research conducted with animals. Why? Well, for the simple fact that an animal cannot willingly sign an informed consent document. An animal cannot be debriefed. Anything that you do as a researcher, you're doing it with the approval of other people, not the animals themselves and researchers are always very aware of this fact. Because of this reason, there are some psychologists who believe that animal research should be condemned, but there are far more who recognize that it is an indispensable part of how we learn about the brain and behavior, and strive to keep all of their animal participants happy and healthy. The fact that the animals who participate in research are so critically important and valuable makes it all the more important that an IACUC does their job responsibly and fairly. Ethicality is a critical part of research, whether it be human or animal. It's not an afterthought, but it's something that is first and foremost in every researcher's mind when designing new experiments. And though, of course, you can find bad or corrupt individuals anywhere, the system of checks and balances set in place by an IACUC and an IRB means that it's far less likely that anyone will be harmed from psychological research. If you'd like to know more about what ethical principles look like in psychology, you can find that video right here. Or if you want to see our latest Psy vs. Psy video, try it right here. Make sure you like, subscribe, and do all those fun YouTube things. And until next time, keep thinking. And we'll see y'all later. Bye!